I would concentrate it on the question of matter. What is matter? How is the dynamics of matter to understand the laws of basic uh, 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 science? In order to understand the world as a whole, which I get if I know the pieces and I know the kind of motions of these pieces, the dynamics of it, I will be, and if there are laws for these dynamics as it turned out, then I will be capable to predict the future and also can calculate backward from where we come from. So, I'm really one of the guys, you know, who've worked for nearly 60 years on matter. What is matter and all this kind? What holds the world together? And many people ask me, and what was the most exciting result of this 60 years of work? And I said, well, it was actually <clears throat> that I realized that matter did not exist. And everybody said, poor guy, you know. <laughs> He spent 60 years of his life on something which does not exist, right? Um, I always claim, and that interested me very much, uh, and tell people that I have actually worked on, ma on matter and dynamics of matter for 60 years. You have? Yeah, you, I, I, and myself, right? <clears throat> but many people say, and what, what is the interesting, what is the main result? I said the main result was actually there from the very beginning, but I did not really believe it, mm -hmm. that matter doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. right? <clears throat> that is what I wanted to understand, why I want to do it. And then at the end, <clears throat> I realized it did not exist. And what we failed to find it out was that there is something in the background which was very close to the original um, uh, discovery of Heisenberg that when he was on suit, when he found out this kind of new physics, a very strange one, that he found he had to cheat a little bit with mathematics, you know, instead of if you have a multiplication two times three, it's the same as three times two. So with multiplication, it doesn't matter whether you, what is first and what is second, yeah? that his main discovery was when he introduces a, 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 a mechanism where you have to take care what is first and what is second, the result will be different, right? Even, so three times two is not the same as two times three. Yeah, of course that was there, so I said, you, it, it's different, but he said, well, I did not say two times three, but P, I had something which I call P and something which has this name Q, and if I multiply P times Q, it's different than Q times P, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, uh, they say the new, new mathematics, but the main point was that it meant instead of that what we call a thing is not a thing, but it's a process. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you have a process, it depends who shoots first and who shoots second, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the main discovery. Matter disappeared. There's nothing which exists what we can craft. There's only the in-between. Mm -hmm. I want to get that watching this. Yeah. And you know, th there's a lot of confusion, even with all these decades of discussion. Um, some people say, well, the uncertainty, uh, uncertainty measurement problem is not the same thing as observer effect. You know, observer effect is basically that when you all, when you observe something, you alter it. When you observe an electron, you need a photon to bounce off it, and therefore you alter it. And that's completely different from the uncertainty measurement problem, which is basically that you know you can't get accurate measurements of one if you have accurate measurements of the other yeah. wave particles. That's exactly. So these are two separate issues, are they? Yeah, I mean it is more fundamental. I mean the other one is of course that whether you can measure it or not measure, but it is something fundamental uh, in background. It, it is on principle, it is impossible, you know, to have the one and the other. And it has not only to do how do I measure that mm -hmm. if in my measurement I destroy the other one and so mm -hmm. can't catch it. So let me get in very simple, let's like say in Heisenberg contributed, and which is so fundamental, and that is that before you observe a particle, yeah. and the particle being the fundamental building blocks yeah. of the universe, yeah. before you observe it, it does not exist as a particle. No. It yeah. exists yeah. as a potential, right? A possibility wave yes. or a superposition of possibilities. Right. Superposition of possibilities of what? 
Yeah, of, that is the point. The question is not, you cannot ask. Because you go out of the system where you ask yes or no. The logic is different. That's the reason. And people say, cannot you explain it to me? No, I cannot. Because then I have to use old language and that is wrong. Mm -hmm. So the what disappears in a way. So it is actually meant in the old physics, the question first is what exists? And second, how does it behave? Yeah, mm -hmm. you know? And then now, the question what exists, what exists is not allowed at all. It doesn't, it, it has no answer. And many people say, I don't understand that, what do you mean? What is an answer <coughs> where you, you, you say it cannot be answered? I think there are many examples you have. Uh, for example, if you have the question, what is the color of a circle? Blue, red, green? <laughs> no. Uh, uh, without color? No. Color doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. No, what do you mean? And then they pull out the pen, you know, and draw a circle on a piece of paper. And see, the color, the, 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 the circle is blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the circle is blue, which you draw, but you had a pencil which, which is blue. Yeah, and look the thickness of the, of the circle. <coughs> that is because the ball of your ball pen is so big. A circle is not a pen mm -hmm. and not that. So, uh, the, the question is unreasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but how, how can I think about uh, a circle? Well, draw a circle, close your eyes, mm -hmm. close your eyes, think of the color, think of the thickness. What is left over is the important part. Nothing, everybody says. He says, it's not true. Nothing only if you look at it outside of yourself, inside of you the circle is still there, right? So you realize the reason why you cannot ask the question is that you ask for something which you cannot express in our language. So in our language to ask what exists yeah. out there yeah. is the wrong question. The wrong question. The question which remains is what happens. Mm -hmm. So instead of talking about particles, you have to talk about happenings. Mm -hmm. And I call, instead of atom, I say, I talk about haps. And somebody said, what is a haps? A haps is a little happenings. Could we call it a space-time event? No. No. Space-time comes later. <laughs> I see. Yeah. It's a no, happening it is, before space-time. It is before space-time. Space-time, energy and all that doesn't matter. So you go really further down. And here, of course, I mean, comes this language which relates then to religion. That in the moment you ask that you explain it, you return to the world which is your da daily world. And of course, the language which you use is very good in that. But it is inappropriate with what is behind. So we talk about fields, expectation fields, but not in space and time. And first one thought, it is in space and time. Schrödinger, for example, thought, you know, it's a wave in space and time, you know? No, it's not in space and time. If you have two electrons, it's in a six-dimensional space. If you have three, you have a nine. You need an infinite dimensional space. It is something you cannot imagine, right? But I'd like you were saying, yeah. it's wrong to ask what is, but it's okay to ask what's happening. Well, it's That's right. Right? That's right. And you know, it started with the atom that when, when found, if the electron really is there, you know, and it goes around here, when it goes around, actually, it should emit light, mm -hmm. and it's not emitting light. Mm -hmm. Then I said, take the electron and smear it out, you know, and smear mm -hmm. it out. <coughs> Aha, yeah, then it doesn't get the light off. It's a smeared out electron. And the smeared out electron does emit light? The, the smeared out electron no, that doesn't. If doesn't. it's smeared out, there's no, no, no charge rotating no because charge. the charge is smeared out. So it does not. And then they found out, oh, but why is it only at that uh, size that it goes around in that size? That the, the boy said, it looks like a wave. Mm -hmm. So the particle disappeared and the wave is there. Mm -hmm. right? But Heisenberg always spoke of these waves, and correct me if I'm wrong, as transcendent potentials in a domain outside of space-time. Right. 
right? Right. It is. It is a completely different. So language. the superposition of possibilities yeah. is outside of space-time. Could that be in consciousness? It's exactly. It's exactly that. I mean, the the, the point was that he said. Um, you know, it's, it's a little hard to under, uh, express it in English because we have in, in, in German, we have instead of world and, and reality, we have a different uh, expression which we call Wirklichkeit. Mm -hmm. uh, Master Eckhart introduced mm -hmm. that. And Wirklichkeit, if I'm translated into English, it is, it is uh, uh, mm, actuality. Mm -hmm. But actuality is something else. Mm -hmm. It is just something which is only happening without existing. And where is it happening? Could it be happening just in our consciousness? That's it. Yeah. But, the, but the consciousness, as we describe, is the wrong consciousness right. because it's in space and time. Right. So our consciousness, what the, what the, what the, what the, 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 the medical people do, right. um, there's something else. And, mm -hmm. and I only can <coughs> roughly compare it with that. What actually means what is there at the beginning is a software when you com compare with a computer. Mm -hmm. The software has nothing to do with a printed thing I, I have on my, you know. For me, <coughs> uh, the people who look at our brain are looking at the printer. Mm -hmm. that how does it come that the letters is coming out? Huh? Mm -hmm. And they have no idea that they don't find the origin of that what is printed out because that is written in your soft software, you know. Mm -hmm. And for that you have then a stick which you carry around, you know. <coughs> Here, when I say there are all my talks in there, the yeah. 60 of them and also pictures. Uh, if they find that in the, in the printer, they say they throw it out, well, uh, that can't be. The whole information is in there but in a different, completely different form, right. you know. So, they take it again as something which is again in space and time. And Can we that. talk a little bit about this? Could this consciousness then be before the subject-object split yes. of experience? Right. So Because as soon as you have a subject-object, then you have space, time and causality, right? That's right, that's right. And that is, so to say, the big uh, change. I mean, we start out with a Wirklichkeit which is only that, so to say, it's a kind of a information <coughs> which is changing. The most important thing is it's changing. There's nothing like uh, the present time, but only, as we say it in, 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 in English, you also say the momentum, which means it's actually the in between. Mm -hmm. <coughs> uh, the, the, the Wirklichkeit, that what is there, in a way, is something like what he calls a potentiality. Mm. Poten potentiality. It is not it is something which only has the ability in infinite different way to appear as reality. Mm -hmm. So it's not a smeared out reality. You could say it's a smeared out reality. But you see, the mistake we make <coughs> that when we talk about our consciousness with a feeling, we already can, in a way, differentiate between I, the subject, and the object. Okay. <coughs> but they're still connected. Yep. The object cannot live without the subject. Mm -hmm. What we do in science, we cut it apart. Mm -hmm. The isolated object is a thing, and the thing makes a reality. And that's the reason why, with this language, we can never really recover that. Now, one says, all right, now we cut the object away from the subject, but we reintroduce it <coughs> by uh, introducing interactions. For example, the sound waves, which is going back and forth. We first thought we are completely separate, but there is now an energy type, which is matter-like, you know, is going back and forth. And that, in a way, fixed it up, that I cut it before. And that is a wrong assumption. You cut off the spirituality and replace it by something which you describe in, 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 in terms of, of interactions, right? And that is the reason why when people are doing quantum physics, if they only use quantum mechanics, they do not see the difference. Only if you go in relativistic theory, they have not only one, but an infinite number of them um, disappearing as matter and occurring then at, at, at interaction and so on, right? Mm -hmm. So we are in a way misled by Schrodinger, which says, why do we need 
uh, right, to the, the uh, matrix mechanics of Heisenberg and so on, right? Only the algebra, I make it with the Schrodinger equation in that it's in space and time, right? And that is, in a way, <coughs> to my mind, the reason why we are on the wrong track. If the biologists try to get an, an understanding of biology as a complicated um, uh, physical system of the old physics, mm -hmm. <coughs> they, they make it so complicated, say, so that's the reason why it becomes alive. It will never get alive. Mm -hmm. If you have dead matter and crew it together <coughs> with some kind of a pace, it will never get alive. Mm -hmm.